In this lesson, we'll create the text, placeholders, and formatting for a parenthetical. Although we'll only create one parenthetical, the techniques you learn to insert text, placeholders, and formatting are the same that will be used for any parenthetical. Let's begin by opening the file we created in the previous lesson. I'll double-click the Include Files folder, and then I'll double-click the file called Exhibit Marked. Before I begin, I'll take a look at how the finished parenthetical should appear and analyze the elements that need to be included in this file. There is some plain text in this parenthetical that I'll insert by typing. There are two items that can change every time I use this include file, the party before the word exhibit and the number after the word exhibit, so I'll need to insert placeholders for those items. Also, because this is a parenthetical, the text will need to be block indented. So let's start with the formatting. As you learned in Edit, each paragraph style, such as questions, answers, colloquy, and bylines, has its own format symbol to dictate the indentation and margins for the text in that paragraph. For question paragraphs, we use a question format symbol. For answer paragraphs, we use an answer format symbol. For parentheticals, we'll use a parenthetical format symbol. To insert a parenthetical format symbol, click the Format Symbol List button on the toolbar, or press one of the keyboard shortcuts, Shift plus F4, or press F4 twice. Next, either scroll down the list until you see parenthetical, or just press P. To insert the parenthetical paragraph format symbol, either double-click it in the list, or press Enter. Now, I'll begin typing the text of this parenthetical. Open paren, whereupon, comma, and then I'll press the spacebar once. Okay, here I need a placeholder because it won't always be a plaintiff's exhibit. Let's say that it's usually either a plaintiff's or a defendant's exhibit, and I want to be able to pick one or the other. The easiest way to do that is to insert a conflict. If I were to type the text of the conflict directly into the transcript text, the characters would be treated as standard text characters, not as a conflict. It wouldn't display in a different color, the scan forward command would not stop on it, and I wouldn't be able to press a number to select the preferred conflict choice. Conflicts must be inserted into the text via the Insert Conflict Text dialog box, and to open that dialog, I will press Ctrl plus I. Now I can type the conflict. I'll type caret, space, plaintiffs, space, caret, space, defendants, and then press Enter. Great! Now I'll press End to move the cursor to the end of the conflict. The next word is plain text, so I'll just go ahead and type the word exhibit. Okay. Every time I use this parenthetical, there will be a different number or letter after the word exhibit. A conflict doesn't make sense because there are too many possible choices. So instead, I'll use a different type of placeholder, text surrounded by scan stop format symbols. I'm going to go ahead and type a pound symbol to be the placeholder. When I use this include file in edit, I'll replace the pound symbol with the correct number or letter of the exhibit. Now, I'll position the cursor back at the beginning of the symbol, and then press F4, O, which is the shortcut key to surround the following word or more than one word if it's marked first, with scan stop begin and scan stop end format symbols. I'll press end to position the cursor at the end of the line, and now, as the rest of the parenthetical is plain text, I can just type the rest. All that's left to do now is to save the changes and close the file. That's it! I've created a parenthetical include file named Exhibit Marked that I can now use in any job in Edit. Now would be a great time to practice creating a parenthetical. Go into the training user and follow the directions for Exercise 2 in the Manage Jobs Practice document. Then, proceed with the next lesson in order.